Good morning everyone from Jeff's Little Engine Service. So let me show you something. So you can see we have a Craftsman YT3000. The guy brought it in and said that it needs a cam. And uh, I'm kind of curious how he determined that. Uh, but then I see, let me take this hood off. Then I see that he actually has the uh, the valve cover off here. When you rotate the engine, first of all, well, the spark plug's out. There's no compression. But uh, if you notice, these valves aren't moving at all. So I guess that does mean that the cam is messed up, but. I've never seen this before, so there, he probably has other problems other than the cam. Uh, and then I went and checked the oil level. And as you can see, it's non-existent. So someone ran this thing out of oil. So, it probably, so it's probably going to need more than just a cam. But uh, my curiosity has the best of me. Let's open this thing up and see what's on the inside. So I've already removed the uh, the four mounting bolts. There's one that goes there, one that goes back here, and two on the other side, uh, as well as your big bolt on the bottom that holds on your main engine pulley. Taking off the throttle cable here. Uh, looks like I need to take off the gas line. And on the other side, I've disconnected the wiring, disconnected the wire that goes to the starter motor. And now we can take this engine out. So, so I'm actually expecting to find uh, that this engine is completely roached on the inside. Looks like there's a breather line to disconnect too. So I think this was the last thing to disconnect to get this engine off of here. All right, let's see if this comes out of here. Whoa. He has that all loosened up. All right. And there it is. On its trolley. Headed towards the garage. So I think I might just work on it uh, on this cart. I don't have any more bench space. I never have bench space. A lot of you guys notice that. But we can get it off. Just like this. Just got to be careful with the oil spout here, not to let it get messed up. Looks like we do have a little bit of oil left in it. Let me get a pan. Didn't look like there was any oil in it. Just enough to make a mess. Okay, I think I'm actually going to put this engine on here upside down so when I take the cover off, we can see all the goodness and it doesn't come spilling out of there. So no secrets at this point, just get yourself a uh, half inch socket and start going to town. I need more air. All these bolts are the same size. We don't have to worry about uh, keeping track of those.
So to get these covers off of here, you kind of have to be careful. Um, you usually have to beat on it a little while, but you don't want to break anything. I use a rubber mallet here. Uh, one good way is to kind of beat up on the oil filter a little bit, up on these engine mounting tabs. Be careful, you don't want to uh, damage this sump cover at this point. Sometimes it can take a lot of tapping like this to finally get it to break loose. That's usually how I get it, is once I, you can hear it, it starts to make a different sound when you've broken the seal. All right, it's coming loose. I'll just spray a little bit of lubricant on here to help it off the seal. Okay folks, you ready for the great reveal? Let me move the camera here. Okay, ooh, I hear things falling apart already. Oh, brutal. Wow, look at that cam gear. Pieces of cam gear everywhere. Yikes. Another little chunk of cam gear down in there. Okay, so let's see what sort of damage we have here. Actually looks like... Oh no, some teeth got chewed up. Here on the governor you can see. This needs to be replaced, this whole component here. They don't sell the pieces individually that I know of. Yep. Oh, and that cam is... What is this a piece of? It's got to be a piece of that... Uh... Yeah, I don't know what that's from yet. Dang, that cam is locked in there, Daddy-o. I can't get it out. So it looks like these lifters here are locked in place. And uh, looking at the, the top end here, I think the fella might have attempted to adjust the valves. And made them way too tight. So let me loosen the, up those... Uh, valves and push rods so I can get things moving again. So I'm assuming he ran it out of oil. So this is my smallest Torx bit here. It's a T20 I believe. Loosen these babies way up. And we should be able to oh, twist these, get those loosened up. Yeah, he has those tight. You know, I think this guy might have uh, tried to adjust his valves and did it wrong and then blew up the cam. I think that's what happened. Okay, so now that... All right, so now that... The valves are loosened up. You can see these lifters will move, so I can go ahead and pull this cam out of here. And no compression release. 
you know the teeth look good on this gear but I'm feeling it and there's definitely a lot of burrs on there so we'll have to replace this gear too uh, as well as the cam and lifters I don't know if he messed up the socket down in there where the cam goes doesn't seem too loose in that little socket I don't really see any scoring or anything on the cam so I think we might be good you take out these lifters they just pull right out the push rods you have to take out from the other side and you can see you have an aluminum push rod which is for your intake valve and you have a steel push rod down here for your exhaust valve. Don't get them mixed up. So the valves themselves don't seem, don't seem to be locked up, so that's good. And we're looking inside the sump cover here. Just checking to see if there's any damage in there. It doesn't look like it. I don't really see signs that this engine was ran low on oil, so someone must have emptied the oil. Uh, what I do see signs of that someone probably tried to adjust the valves and really screwed it up. I think this gear is called your timing gear and it just slides right up. It still looks pretty good but as I say I can feel burrs all along the top of it where the metal was clashing and considering there was some impact there it's probably a good idea to replace this too in case it's cracked. In case there are cracks I just can't see so if you're wondering what this little component is is here this is your oil pump shaft and it just fell out of the cover when I took it off let's get all these pieces out of here and it looks like we have some remnants of the compression release spring here and I try to account for every part that breaks off these cam compression releases when they go uh, just so I know that there's no pieces floating around inside and we're still looking for the hammer mechanism from the compression release and the little pin that holds it on it's still in there somewhere try to mop up some of this oil in here so I can get a better look Looks like there's a little piece yeah so this is a piece of the pin that holds the little compression release mechanism on the cam so we've found so we've found the spring part of the pin but we still have more parts to uh, to dig up down in there we still have some more parts to try and find down in here. Looks like this might be another piece of uh, pin. Well, there we go. I see the rest of the pin down in there. Right there. But we're still looking for the hammer mechanism. It's in there. I call it a hammer mechanism. It's the compression release uh, mechanism on the cam. The one that always breaks off. So here's a good cam with the uh, compression release mechanism still in place on here. So you can see this is the pin I was talking about that goes through. And you can see the spring. But we haven't found any pieces of this... Uh, mechanism here yet so we'll keep looking still not sure where this came from kind of looks like it came off that cam but I've never seen a plastic piece on there before aha 
see it. There it is. I think there's still some more pieces. We'll dig them all out. I've actually spotted another piece of that cam uh, that made it up into the push rod chamber using my magnet here to fish it out. I've never seen one make it up into the chamber like that, a uh, piece of cam, but there you go. Looks like another piece of that pin. I'm glad I peeked down in there with my flashlight. All right, so here we are. I have the engine up on this side here. And as you can see, we're still digging out pieces of that cam. But uh, once you put the engine in this position, uh, you can pretty much, you know, all the stuff falls down to the bottom. Ooh, that's a fly. He must have gotten in after I left this thing for a few days so okay so let's get all these pieces out of here I'll make sure to get way back in there because we don't want any chunks of metal floating around that would be a bad thing so I've been kind of putting this off because uh, the next step is to clean this darn gasket off of here and that's always a pain in the butt but I have a new uh, technique that I started using and basically it just involves a heat gun and it seems to work pretty good. So I'll show you how I do that. And before I start chipping away at the gasket, I'm going to uh, put some towels in here so the gasket's material doesn't get in there. Like that. All right, let's get the heat gun. Well, here we go. And careful because there is rubber seals um, in here. I think like on the governor shaft. I think there might be a seal. Well, if there is, you don't want to get it too hot. see if that helped yeah it really does help guys so try that technique see how you like it it's been working for me lately because I know you all know what a pain in the butt it is to clean off gaskets so when you're doing this uh, just don't scratch up the surface get some light scratches in there and it'll be all right Probably more than I'd like to see, but it'll be fine. You guys want to watch me do this whole surface it's going to take about a half an hour or should I speed it up for you I think I'll speed it up for you
so once I get the surface uh, to this point fairly clean I'll get my sanding sponge here and I'll just do a little bit of this action and this is a medium to fine grit look at how nice that looks that's how it's done son All right, back to scraping. You just have to be patient, work your way around. Try not to catch things on fire, which I've been known to do. I'm gonna get this really hot this time. Since there's nothing up here I can damage, I'm going to get this baby hot. Alright. Let's see how that works. Pretty good. Nice. You gotta make sure to get all that black gasket off of there. Otherwise, you won't get a good sealing surface. I mean, all of it. Don't be trying to half ass it. Make sure you get all of it off of there. Technique, folks. It's all about technique. Where's my sponge? There it is. Right, look how good that looks. It's 
So you gotta tip this up and uh, spray it out a little bit. Make sure it's clean. Now you wanna make sure to lube all these parts back up before you uh, button things up. It's like I could still see some metal coming out of there. This is 400 grit sandpaper. And if you and, it, and if you look on the shaft here where the oil seal will sit, you don't have to worry about this part of the shaft so much, but all around here uh, we're going to want to make sure to this is 400 grit and we just want to make sure to smooth that out a little bit. Get it looking nice for that seal. Just lightly sand. Try to get rid of that line. I don't know if I'll be able to, but... I think that'll be clean enough. Okay, so at this point, uh, everything's cleaned out, and I think we're ready to start putting things back together, which now is the fun part. So as you can see, everything looks really good in here, and we're ready to start putting things back together. So let's do that.